let's factor some trinomials. In problem 12, we have two trinomials to factor. In the first trinomial, the leading term, the x squared term, just has a coefficient of 1. And so this is a friendly situation. We can factor this trinomial if we can identify two numbers, let me call them m and n, that multiply to equal 24 and add to equal 10. And to help us identify these numbers, one option, if you don't think of them right away, you can list all the factors that multiply to equal negative 24, all the nice factor pairs. Starting with negative 1 and positive 24, I know I want the smaller number to be negative, so I get a positive result when I add them together. I can go through the list, negative 1 and 24. 2 divides evenly into 24 12 times. 3 goes in 8 times. 4 goes in 6 times. And the next factor pair would be negative 6 and 4, which would give me a negative sum, so I've gone too far. Well, you probably already noticed that in this list, negative 2 and 12 is the pair that adds to positive 10. So my factorization is x minus 2 from the negative 2 times x plus 12 from the positive 12. Of course, it's a great idea to check, especially with factoring problems. It's good to make sure that this is actually the answer that I want, and I can check by multiplying this back out, by foiling. If I multiply together the two x terms, I get x squared. x times 12 is 12x. 12 negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. Combining those like terms, the x terms, I get what we started with, x squared plus 10x minus 24. Our second factoring problem is a bit more complicated because the coefficient in front of x squared is something other than 1. So we have two possible approaches we can take. We can use guessing and checking. If I set up the structure for factoring this into a pair of binomials, I know my binomials will have to have an x term and a constant term. The numbers in front of the x have to multiply to equal 2. And so there's really only one option. I can have 2 times 1. The constant part of the binomial has to multiply to equal negative 7. So again, I, I don't really have many options. I just have negative 1 and positive 7, or negative 7 and positive 1. Because I want the middle to be negative, I think this is probably going to be my better choice. And let me pair up the negative 7 so that it multiplies with the 2x and put the plus 1 with the 2x binomial. Of course, as we did with the first problem, we should check. So if we FOIL, 2x times 1x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 7 is negative 14x. 1 times 1x is just positive 1x. And 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. Combining the like terms, the x terms, I end up with 2x squared minus 13x minus 7, which is what we started with. So our guess worked out. Let me write this answer a little more clearly as 2x plus 1 times x minus 7. All right, well, this gave us an answer. Guessing and checking can work. But I alluded to a separate method, and I want to talk about that now. Another way to solve this problem a little bit more systematically is with something called the AC method. That name relates to a general form for this type of trinomial, ax squared plus bx plus c. And in particular, ac refers to our first step, which is to multiply together the values of a and c. 
So in our particular problem, we have 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. Multiplying a and c, I get negative 14. And then what I want to look for is a factor pair of negative 14 that adds to equal negative 13. So it might be clear to you pretty quickly that the factor pair that works is positive 1 and negative 14. The only other option would be positive 2 and negative 7, but of course those don't add to negative 13. Once I have this factor pair that works, this is a very special factor pair. What I'm going to do is use those two numbers, 1 and negative 14, to split the negative 13x into two separate terms, negative 14x plus 1x. Now I have four terms, and I can factor them by grouping. So I'm going to group together the first two terms, think of them as a binomial, and factor out the greatest common factor. 2 and 14 are both even, so I can factor out 2 and also an x, and what's left behind is x minus 7. There is no common factor among the second group, x minus 7, so I'm just going to explicitly factor out a 1, and that leaves behind x minus 7. Well, what's special here is that x minus 7 is the same in both parentheses. So I can think of that as a common factor of the two larger groups of this group of factors and this group of factors. x minus 7, that whole bunch of stuff in the parentheses, is a common factor. So I can write that and then in a new set of parentheses write what's left behind. 2x from the first group of factors and plus 1, that explicit plus 1 that I factored out because there were no common factors among the second pair, the second group. So what we have here is both of these x minus 7s become a combined common factor times the factors that are left behind from each of those groups. Notice our answer is nothing new. It's exactly what we found with guessing and checking, but the approach with the AC method is a bit more methodical. There's less guessing. We had to figure out this special factor pair, but after we did that, we could essentially kind of plug things back into the algorithm. We can split the negative 13x based on the two numbers that we found, and then factor by grouping. Factoring trinomials is an important skill, and we'll look at a couple more examples in the next problem.